previously in Finero. I want to talk about the supremacy of Christ. We live in a very great time of church history. And I believe every man that has existed after the resurrection of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is living or has lived in the best time of human history. In 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verses 1, the Bible says, The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And the Bible says there was no open vision. In the realm of the spirit, in the kingdom of glass, there is inferior realms and superior realms of vision, of revelation. And all of these serve different purposes in the order God has ordained them. That is why Eli had lost his place with God. But he could speak into a barren womb and it conceives. Because that was in the order of his office as a priest. I've given an example of a man called Ahithophel. The Bible says he was a man of counsel. And he lived in the days of David. And the Bible says that the counsel of Ahithophel was taken as the counsel of God. But Ahithophel did not function in that glory because he was a man whose heart was tucked to God. Ahithophel functioned in that glory because of the office in which he sat. And it's evident. Why? Because if Ahithophel really was a man from whom they sought the counsel or the oracle of God, he would not have set himself against the man with the heart of God. That is why I say, even though it's vision and revelation, that one is a bit inferior. In John chapter 11, verses 47, the Bible says, And then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a counsel and said, What do we do for this man? doeth many miracles. They're talking about Jesus. And the Bible says, and if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it's expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should perish not. And this spake he, listen, not of himself, but the Bible says, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. A prophetic action sat on a priest because he was the priest that year. That kind of revelation was not available to him because he was a man whose heart was yielded to God to hear the way of the Spirit. He prophesied it because he was the high priest of that time and he did not even know or understand the full revelation of what was prophesied, but he did prophesy. There's a difference between a revelation you have by reason of the gift you have in God and a revelation that you will have by reason of seeking the heart of God. Likewise, there's a difference between a vision that will come by reason of the office of the prophetic you sit in or the priest versus the vision that will come to you because you seek after the heart of God. It takes too much maturity to tell that difference. When you do, you separate the inferior from the superior. When Moses went on the mountain and he was seeking for the ultimate vision and revelation and this man stays on the mountain for many days, he comes back from the mountain and his face is shining. And the Bible says that Israel could not behold him because of the glory that was shining on his life. You see a man of God, every time he turns to God, he's illuminated. The longer he turns to men, a certain glory diminishes. And when that glory diminishes, he has to veil. That is what he's talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. He says in verses 15, now I'm talking about the superior realm. He says, even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Whenever though they turn face to God as Moses did, God removes the veil and there they are face to face. That means every time they turn to God, there is no veil. And the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, he says, there is liberty. He's defining the superior vision. And the Bible says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed. We are metamorphosed. We are translated into the same image from glory to glory 
even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, when you turn and are turned, that's what the Bible says, that we might grow into Him in all things. How can you grow into Him in all things and ask for a job? How can you grow into Him in all things and be sick? How can you carry the glory of God and fail to change your generation? It's not possible. Yet when you have the superior, you don't need to seek the inferior. The inferior will follow after. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick. If they take anything poisonous, it shall not hurt them. All of these things are signs following men who know what to seek in God. God at sundry times, the Bible says, speck unto us in times past by the prophet. But now, in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the eons, the ages, the periods, the times. He has spoken by him. You don't look for a job. You see what he has said. He said, I was once young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither they are seen begging bread. You don't seek for healing. You see what he has said. For he that knew no sin became sin. That you being dead unto sins might live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. You see what he has said. And the Bible says he's the brightness of his glory. The express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When Paul saw him, he says, and of the things that I counted gain, I have counted all that but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. Why? Because when you see him every time you want to see him it's not just what you see it's who you become when you see him. when a man has been with God you can tell the apostles understood this mystery one time Peter is walking on the temple called beautiful the certain man crippled from his birth was being carried along who was laid each day at the gate of the temple that he might beg for charitable gifts from those who entered the temple Listen, when Peter and John were about to go into the temple, he asked them to give him a gift. And the Bible says, and Peter directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John. And what did I tell him? Look at us. Look, look, listen. That's the generation that will walk on a crippled man and tell him, look at me. That will walk on a blind man and tell him, look at me that will walk to a deaf man and tell him look at me that will walk on a man who has cancer and tell him look at me that it will walk on a man who's failing and tell him look to us silver and gold have we not but that which we have which we received which we touched which we tested concerning the word of life we give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, he stretched out his hands, the Bible says, and lifted the man up with a firm grip and raised him up. He didn't say the man was raised. This was in the jurisdiction of Peter because they saw the vision. When people saw that by a man looking at these guys, a crippled bone was healed, all of them looked at Peter and John stunned. Peter tells them, he says, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Listen to the next line. Why look ye so earnestly on us? It means when a layman walked and they had heard that he said, look at us. They knew if we continue looking at this man. Oh, they knew if we continue looking at this man, something will change. That is why we preach grace. To take away the veil so men would see him clearly as he is. The superior vision. Christ! This sermon is now available on DVD and CD at Fenero Sales Table and Andrew Womack Bookshop.